How to calculate buying someone out of a house when inheriting with siblings. That's our topic today. We'll get started right after this. When someone passes away, they often leave a piece of property that gets inherited by more than one person. And much of the time, it's siblings. When two or more siblings come into an inherited house in this way, it often can become a complex situation where one sibling wants to keep the house and one sibling wants to sell the house or even more siblings are involved and you have a division of how they wanna handle the home that they've inherited. This can quickly, as you can imagine, become an emotional situation and it can become complex when wanting to buy someone out of house in this type of a process. These are the steps that you could use to go through the process of buying someone out of a house and especially how to buy out a sibling on inherited property, shared property amongst the siblings. Buying a property that's through an inheritance, it occurs when more than one sibling or anything, it could be more than siblings, one of them wants to purchase that inherited property. Like I said, it generally happens with siblings, but really if the will states that other people besides siblings will inherit a portion of the property. Maybe someone that is a beneficiary wants to buy out the rest of the beneficiaries. The thing about siblings is they tend to both or all inherit a property in equal shares, which does kind of simplify the process a bit. In a situation where one sibling wants to keep the property and the rest want to sell, there are ways to go through that process. It is a bit tricky and I do not recommend that anyone try to do this without obtaining legal advice because you ultimately want to come to agreeable terms so that everybody gets what they want. So what happens when you inherit a house with siblings? If a parent or other relative happens to leave you a property that is in a will or even a trust, and it all is going to your siblings and yourself, you have several options with the property. Like I said before, in most cases, you have equal shares of the property, which does simplify things. When you find yourself in a situation where someone left a property to you and your siblings, and all of you don't agree to just sell the property and take that gift that your loved one left you, then you're gonna need to make a plan for how to get through the transaction, meaning if someone is able, capable of purchasing out the rest of you, how do you get through that? Of course, there's no way to take all the emotions out of this situation. And believe me, in a lot of cases, there's really strong emotions about someone having passed away and the home that they lived in for years and somebody wants to keep the home it can get super emotional. And since we can't take the emotions out, we have to get into a situation where the equation becomes fair and professional. Keeping things fair and professional can help to keep the relationships intact, which is probably ultimately what you want as siblings. And certainly I'm sure parents would want that, your deceased parents. So how to buy a sibling out of a shared property? The person that wants to keep the property is going to have to pay the rest of the siblings or the rest of the beneficiaries their share of what the home would sell for. And you're gonna need this to have a legally binding either quick claim deed or some other type of legal document. The first thing you wanna do is get an appraisal. While you may feel tempted to just figure out what the property is worth by either looking at something like Zillow or even talking to a real estate professional like me, my recommendation is that that can be your first steps towards understanding the fair market value in the current marketplace of your loved one's property. But eventually you wanna get an appraisal into the mix so that they can give an accurate appraisal of the value of the home. Of course, it's better to just remove yourself from that process of determining value by hiring a licensed and bonded appraiser. And doing this will make sure that the value of the property is established 
and that the buyout is based on a fair current market value of the home. In the spirit of fairness, it's usually a good idea not to hire an appraiser that anybody involved in the transaction has any type of relationship with. Instead, find someone who is a qualified appraiser that has absolutely no skin in the game. If you don't know where to find an appraiser, go ahead and reach out to me or another real estate professional that you know for an introduction, a referral to someone who is a licensed and bonded appraiser. You might even want to then look into their customer reviews if available. If for whatever reason, once you have that appraisal in hand, if any of the beneficiaries or siblings are not happy with the appraised value, then my recommendation would be to go ahead and get another appraisal. And that way you have two different individual appraisers saying from a scientific point of view, generally, what the value of the home is and then you can kind of figure it out from there of course you want to keep that second appraiser as someone who is neutral just like the first one now these appraisals are going to cost you somewhere around 500 dollars to get them done but it's money well spent so that you then have that fair market value to discuss with the sibling that chooses to want to buy out the rest of the siblings. The next step is to decide what each individual beneficiary's share of the property is worth. Once you have an agreement of the value of the property, then it's time to discuss each individual share so that everyone is aware of what their share would be if a sibling was to buy out the other siblings. In many cases, the shares are pretty straightforward. Even if there is not a will, if this property is going through probate and there's four siblings, the probate courts would have each of the siblings have an equal share. If there is a will, that will will state what the shares would be for each sibling or individual. So for example, if the home is left to two of you and it's equal shares, of course, you'll just split it 50-50. However, some wills are not as clear cut. I have seen situations where for whatever reason, one sibling was given 60% of the home and the other one was given 40% of the home. So then you will use those numbers to guide you towards what is the equal share to each of the siblings. If the will is complicated, or the estate is quite large, you should probably speak with a probate attorney. Here in California, if there is a will, in most cases, no matter what, the property will need to go through probate, even if there is a will. The only way to avoid probate generally is for your loved one to have put everything into a trust. So here in California, even when you have a will, you've got to go through probate. So when having a probate attorney involved in your situation, they will handle a lot of that heavy lifting of figuring out how the property should be split. So when buying someone out of a house, how to pay your sibling? If you have enough money in the bank, of course, you can use the cash to pay your portion or pay the portion that is owed to your sibling directly. In that case, there would need to be done a quit claim deed. Again, the attorney should be able to help with that, guiding you towards proper legal taking over the property as your own once you pay out your sibling. However, many people do not have readily available cash. Alternatively, when buying someone out of a house, you can refinance the property and pay the portion to your sibling which is almost effectively the same as paying them cash. My recommendation is you speak to a trusted financial advisor as well as a mortgage specialist. You're gonna to wanna to know what your options are in this situation. Next, you wanna make it legally binding. The purchase is not over when exchanging funds, when paying your sibling, or when you're the one receiving the funds from your sibling. You and your sibling will need to do some documentation so that you taking over the property and wanting to have the deed in your name, you're gonna to have to make sure you go through that process to get the name out of the trust, if it's in a trust, or out of your loved one's name and into your own. Again, this is something that your real estate attorney or your probate attorney can help direct you on how to properly get this done so that everything is legally binding. 
and those documents will need to be signed in front of a notary so that everything is notarized properly and the deed will then transfer to the person who's keeping the home. After all that's completed correctly, it will need to be filed with the San Diego County Clerk's Office to make sure that everything has been completely done and the transfer of the property is transferred into the person's name that is purchasing it, the person that's doing the buyout. What do you do if you can't come to an agreement when wanting to buy out a sibling of an inherited property? Unfortunately, tensions and emotions can make this whole situation very difficult. If you tried to work through the process with your sibling and they just are not agreeing, either in the case where your sibling is insisting on buying out the property and for whatever reason you don't want to do that, it becomes extremely difficult. If you've tried to work through the steps with your sibling and come to an agreement and you cannot make it work, then there is a way around it. It's called a partition agreement. This is a case that can be extremely expensive and difficult and will require legal guidance. So you want to really think about what's important through this process and if it's a good idea for one person to buy out the rest of the siblings or if you wanna to go to court and have a partition lawsuit, then you can go ahead and do that. But in most cases, most families can work out the difficulties and figure out what the property is worth, how much the siblings need to split amongst each other, and they move on and go on with their lives. I hope this has been helpful. If it has, please like, subscribe, hit that bell button, and I'd love to hear about any comments you have about situations where you've been in a situation similar to this or have heard about someone going through this process. Thank you and I'll see you next week.